Good afternoon. Oh, come on. <laughs> you knew it was going to come. One, two, three. Good afternoon. Oh, uh, we'll try. So an interesting combination here. We've got the CMO Club, which helps CMOs with peer networks and education. We've got Cami, who's an actual CMO. And we've got myself, who works with engaging with CMOs through IBM. So we've got people who help with marketing with solutions, people who help with expertise and information, and the person we help. So what we want to do today is talk a little bit about the shift that has happened in marketing, but more importantly, what that means for the relationships that happen in the, in the C-suite, and in particular, CMO and CIO. Because not only does this mean that it's going to help our business, it also helps us. So if you want to be a rock star, a pioneer, innovator, keep listening. If not, you know, doors in the back, we can kind of go from there. <laughs> If you think about marketing real quick, we really shifted to where understanding your customer as an individual is not enough. We have to understand our customer in context. That means big data. That means a lot of information that we didn't have before that we now have at our, at our disposal. That also means that we can use that to create new experiences. And those experiences can then be co-created with employees, with partners, and even our own customers. So I want to start the panel with Cami, and if you could explain with, around Kidzania, but also how you're seeing, uh, how you're engaging with customers in context and the systems and how you're co-creating. Sure. Um, I think it's a great topic to be discussing because if you're a CMO today and you're not pretty excited and engaged with data and technology, then I'd question how long you're going to be in the job. And it's changed so much, and it's changed in ways that are really empowering and enables you to do much more in your company to actually drive top line growth. And to give you a little bit of background on Kidzania, because I imagine most of you haven't heard of it, we create role playing sort of theme parks for kids. And they go into these facilities, they're very large, 80,000 square feet, very beautiful. And they're able to try out different jobs, and they're able to earn and spend and save a currency that we call Kidzos. And we have about 16 of them around the world now. And we've always been excited about data. The company's been around since 1999 and have um, historically collected a lot of data on what activities kids enjoy the most, what's enjoyed by girls versus boys, by different age groups. But collecting data was mainly just a way to observe behavior and then kind of make macro uh, decisions about things that we could do differently. And over the past three years, and since I came on board with the company, we've really changed our view and seen that what's exciting is to use the data to actually shift the consumer's experiences to be much more real time, to be much more personalized. And so now when a child comes into Kidzania, we use RFID technology. We um, encourage them to join our loyalty program where they become a citizen of Kidzania and they get a passport and do all kinds of, of fun things. And we know them by name. So we're able to um, say hello to them, wish them happy birthday. We know all the activities that they've been performing. We're able to provide different activities to different kids based upon their experience. And we're also able to start engaging with them outside of the four walls of our facility so that now they can go online and they can view a resume of all of the careers that they've been exploring. They can see their bank statements and in real time see what kind of interest they're earning on their bank accounts. And so all of these things um, were visions that we had, but required very, very deep collaboration between marketing and IT and operations to actually bring them to life. And it's certainly been a learning for me that in some ways, getting the big ideas is the easy part. Actually getting everybody in the organization working together to make them happen for the consumer is where the challenge comes in. And I think that's what we'll spend some time talking about. No, ab absolutely. Um, within, when you were working with the CIO, what were you able to do before versus after the big vision? So what was the before and what was the after? 
So the before was that all of our data was aggregated, it's set in different silos, um, you know, we had to go do queries that took a day to run. It, it just wasn't impacting the experience itself. So now with the real-time data, um, we are able to actually change the experience for the consumer based on, uh, based on what we know about their behavior. Great, excellent. N Nadine, you with the CMO Club work with a lot of CMOs. Are there other examples of research that would I guess mimic or also uh, talk about the experiences that, that can be had. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, um, we do a lot of uh, research at the CMO Club to really mine on different business challenges that a CMO faces. This topic keeps coming up as a hot topic. I think it goes beyond the CIO and, and in fact, uh, across the entire C-suite, how do you actually work together to shift your focus from being product oriented to being customer oriented? Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the broader C-suite later, but specifically for a CIO, a recent paper was just launched last week from uh, collectively the CMO Club, CIO Magazine, and EPAM, really trying to understand what the three major crossroads are for CMOs and CIOs and provide some direction and guidance around how to improve those relationships. Um, I won't go through the three now, but I think two things really stood out for me as, as very meaningful and very um, actionable. The first is, make sure you're speaking the same language. Uh, you know, very often we hear terms like digital product, agile, omni-channel. In, in a CIO's world, those mean very different things than in the CMO world. In, for instance, omni-channel. Omni-channel is really, for a CIO, all about technology and um, putting things together in a very efficient manner to reach the, shop, the consumer, but in a CMO's mind, they're really focused on that customer end experience and having access and the ability to engage that customer at every single touch point, whether it's digital or not. So when you're sitting down and talking about things like omni-channel, really make sure that you're talking about the same thing. And I think the second thing is who owns what. Um, you know, if you ask uh, CIOs and CMOs Respectively, who owns budgets for mobile digital social, I would think more than 80% of each would say they own it, and that's what we saw in the study. So how do you actually pick out which pieces of that? Because those are really big concepts, um, and there's a lot of different pieces to own uh, for different people. Oh, great. IBM uh, did a study where we actually spoke to over 5,000 C-suite uh, folks, and in particular, we were asking the CEO, and this comes into how this can help me look like at Rockstar. We, the CEOs were asked what were the top skill sets that they saw for success that you needed. Number one was collaboration. That was actually above honesty. Honesty came in about half of that, and below that was expertise. So if you're dishonest and you're not that great at your job, you better be really collaborative, basically, because <laughs> that's where you're going to have to make some things up on it. But being collaborative, so Cammie, how do you do this? Because, you know, it's IT's and Mars and marketing's yeah. and Venus and how does this work? And I have a real trifecta of challenges because first you have just CMOs and CIOs speaking um, different figurative languages. And then in my case, my CIO is in Mexico, which is where our corporate headquarters are. So we actually speak different native languages and we're located in different places. And it started by really helping my CIO to understand that this was a great opportunity to be part of driving revenue for the company, to be part of making um, a future where we would be engaging our consumers in a really um, new and differentiated ways. And I actually brought him up to an event that CIO Magazine did. It was right here in this room. And, <laughs> It was um, an initiative on my part to try and get him to start thinking more broadly about what was possible. And then from there, we did a joint offsite with our teams to really start doing that kind of visioning. And then a lot of tactical things. He and I have weekly one-on-ones where we sit down and talk about how the teams are doing, also talk about what our individual challenges are and how we can support each other. So a lot of education for him, and also a lot of education for myself. I found that while 
it's easy for me to give good direction on how to do a big advertising campaign or how to do a media buy, that when it came to really giving good direction on technology initiatives, I needed to learn that new language mm -hmm. and needed to be comfortable asking lots of questions, engaging with groups like the CMO Club to find out what my peers were doing. Mm -hmm. um, I did a wonderful class that some of you may have heard of called Decoded, where you actually, as an executive, go for a day and learn how to code, which was really helpful for me to make sure that I was telling my CEO things that I needed in a language that he would understand. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you get the, to the common goal part? Because before, mm -hmm. CIOs are very much, you know, bottom line, I need to make sure that nothing bad happens, and marketing is really focused on the top line, let's get more revenue. How, how did you kind of make that work? Through lots of conversations, through making sure that I was selling him on the vision and on how it would help his career to be part of this vision. And my first year when I was going in and doing my budget, particularly asking for big capital projects that involve technology, I was sort of doing it by myself. And I realized that didn't work too well. It's much more effective if I could bring him on board in the process up, upstream. And so this year, for example, we went together to sell the CEO on the technology investments that we needed. Um, I involved him, much my CIO, much more deeply in RFPs that we were doing with technology providers. So really approaching it as a partnership. Oh, excellent. Again, Nadine, mm -hmm. with the research that you're looking across a particular C-suite, is this, are there similar ways that other companies are engaging this way? Or what is your perspective on, on the, this kind of engaging the CIO and even across the C-suite as well? Yes, yeah, so I think Cami's examples are, are right on and um, a model to really follow uh, for a lot of CMOs. But specifically, the question keeps coming up over and over again, how does a CMO really demonstrate that credibility across the C-suite? So with new languages and with new technology, you know, completely new concepts come new metrics. And this is a topic that is not just only from a CMO perspective, but again, from a CEO, CFO, CIO perspective, how do you get everybody to think about things in the right way or align in the right way so that they're all speaking the same language, in this case, about metrics? So I don't think that answer is really out there yet. So tomorrow we're actually um, launching a new piece of research with Gartner to go deep on what are the key metrics that really need to drive those discussions and really demonstrate uh, success on behalf of the CMO um, that a CIO, CFO, and a CEO really resonate with. And it's, it is about top line, it, but it's also about bottom line in things like advocacy and uh, influencers and reduction of calls of com uh, complaint calls to the call center all feed the big picture of engaging your customer and making sure that you're delivering that positive customer experience in every single touch point that you have with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we do, my CIO and I do have a joint scorecard where we're looking at number of um, members in our um, Be Kidsanian loyalty program. Mm -hmm. We're looking at um, engagement and how we're changing repeat visits, mm -hmm. for example. So that scorecard is critically important. And critical, yeah, absolutely. So, we, so we, we heard how you did it. What were some of the big obstacles that you ultimately had to overcome when you first started on this path, so hopefully that we can avoid some of those or figure out how to tackle them when they do come in the yeah, road. Yeah, I think one of the big obstacles was getting the right team in place. I think there's a whole, and on both sides, um, there are a lot of new skill sets that are required in effective marketing organizations and IT organizations now. So you know, we needed project managers who could really be translators and talk both the, the vision and the business requirements and also talk about the technology that was gonna be required to deliver it. And, and making sure that my um, IT team knew that when I went in with business requirements, I expected them to challenge and push and not uh, kind of to help present multiple options so we could figure out together the best way to meet those requirements. But you have to have people on the team who can straddle both worlds. Um, and he needed some new people on his team, some better user interface people. Um, and I co-funded 
those people. And I have them sitting within his organization because I really want him to feel the co-ownership, but um, it's, they're responsible to my, uh, my organization as well. Excellent. Nadine, are there other, I guess, looking at the obstacles, are, are there other tools or solutions or things that you see other companies using to address it? I mean, yeah. Tammy's co-founding, which is, which is probably, <laughs> that's really going to, going to <clears throat> really showing the support. What are some other companies also doing in order to help bridge that CMO-CIO partnership? So, I, well, there are so many examples, um, and, you know, I know our time is short here, but, you know, I think one thing that we've heard a lot was take a step back and as a group, you know, the CMO, CIO, and their supporting uh, team members really focus on the end user, which is the customer, and really start to live and breathe in the customer's mind to see what it is that needs to be delivered for the customer and then build around that. Don't just race to do everything all at once. I think Jamba Juice is a really good example of that. Um, Susan Shields uh, is, uh, was a former CMO of Jamba Juice. She's now the head of innovation for Jamba Juice. She was uh, part of our CMO guide to omni-channel personalization that we released last year. And I think a really good example, she said, um, that is, it's public, uh, it's available in the, in the guide, is that it wasn't about running off and making sure that they had the, the optimal web interface for online, an optimal mobile application for on the go, or even an in-store presence, but it was about understanding the Jamba Juice consumer who is actually always on the go. So rather than prioritize building out web interaction, prioritize building out the mobile app first, get that right, and then all things lead from there. And that's a, a really good way to align everybody in the organization around the customer. Yep. And as CMO, you've got to be that storyteller. You've mm -hmm. got to be um, bringing the examples to the organization that will keep the consumer first. And then um, even small things like I asked my CIO to make sure that his team was out in our facilities living the, the life of our consumers mm -hmm. and engaging directly with consumers. Mm -hmm. So. Excellent. Are there any, I guess, b b we're, as we're coming near the end of the panel, are there any other final thoughts that you'd like to, I, I guess, pass along to the group before then I'll, we can uh, wrap up the session? So I, I guess I'll start with Nadine. Do you have any final thoughts for? Um, I would say that I, I want to pick on, um, pick out a point that Cami made earlier, which is about peer-to-peer -peer learning. You know, at the CMO Club, what we focus on is providing that environment and the research to support our members. But at the end of the day, it's about the members. It's about peers reaching out to peers and solving for their challenges. And if you have a network that you trust, that is the best place to go for answers. And that is, I guess, my, my final thought. Leverage your network for good solutions. Okay, Cammie? My quick ones would be always stay focused on the consumer. Mm -hmm. Um, I think your point about collaboration is critical and you have to spend a lot of time building those internal relationships. And finally, um, I think as a, as a marketer, you have to dig in mm -hmm. and try and learn this um, and try and be able to show your willingness to ask questions and to kind of go the extra mile to learn more about technology. Great, excellent. So to recap, make sure that we're collaborating and in doing so, it starts with the language starts with making sure that you're working together. Could be, as uh, Cami mentioned, could be going to decode to actually learn how to code or speak agile or be able to ultimately make sure you're on the same language. Make sure that the goals are aligned. Make sure you've got the right expertise and get help as needed. And then ultimately, put the customer at the center, put the customer first, which we were just mentioning. And one last thought, if the, it's not the IT department to understand the customer, it's our job as marketers to make sure that the IT department knows who that customer is. And so with that, I'm going to uh, wrap up the panel. So Nadine, Cami, thank you very much. Thank you, John.